Hey, welcome back to the Farewell North devlog. This is entry number two. In the first one, which I'll leave a link to in the description below, I gave a bit of a background on the game. In this one, we're going to go a little bit deeper onto one of the mechanics I'm currently working on. So just a quick refresher if you haven't seen the first video. Farewell North is essentially a game of restoring color to the world. So you're traveling this archipelago and your objective is to restore color. So as you do that, certain elements of the game are revealed, so for, for instance this bridge, or elements of the island are brought back to life, like these birds. And so you're going around and you're exploring, and the islands are a big part of that. So what we're going to build today is a brand new movement system to explore the islands. So some islands are only going to be accessible once a prerequisite has been completed. So for instance, you couldn't get to this island until the bridge has been unveiled as you saw, and some will be available via platforming, so there might be some rocks in the water that you can hop across, but there's others that are too far away, and I want you to be able to explore at your own pace. So what I've decided is to build a canoe system. So without further ado, let's take it all the way back to the beginning and see how the feature came to be, starting from the first phase, which is inspiration. So this is one of my favorite places to go for inspiration. This is the National Scottish Museum in Edinburgh. If you're ever in Edinburgh, definitely check it out. They have incredible displays. They have this whole section on locomotion and movement systems. So you see these airplanes and kind of there's some race cars in the background. They have communication devices and all kinds of really interesting displays here. But what I came specifically to look at was the canoes that they have. I wanted to get a sense for the size of them, the scale, the textures that were used to make them, and just a general feel for them. They have these small models, and I really in particular like these two, these kind of narrow designs with the, the balance on the side, these old kind of fishing canoes. They're really, really interesting. They also have this sort of ghostly looking canoe, which looks so unique, and I think this would actually fit well in the game. And then beside that, they have some bigger ones that are obviously not meant for a single, a single person, so what I was looking for was these kind of smaller, more narrow ones at the beginning. So, now that I'm inspired, it's time to do some modeling and then get into the code and implement the whole feature. Modeling's not my strong suit though, so I like to have a little extra motivation to get going. Alright, that was definitely a little bit much, but I'm not so good at modeling, so I just like to make it look a little more epic. So as you can see here, I went with a really symmetrical design. I chose not to include the balance on the side like the canoes that I saw in the museum, just because symmetry is going to make it a little bit easier to make sure that the player can get in and go no matter which direction they park it or get into it. I'm just going to keep things simple for now. I'll probably come back to this later on because I do really like that look, um, but for now I just wanted to keep it simple. So. My process for modeling is essentially to always grab a bunch of reference images, model them almost to a T, and then from there do some customization. So kind of replicating the kind of stock images or whatever you can find for good reference just helps make sure that the proportions and the layout and everything is good, and then you can kind of customize and add your own uh, style to it. So this is pretty vanilla. Um, I just kind of elongated the ends a little bit and added the balance in the middle, but I think it looks pretty good. It's definitely a good starting point. And so from there, I basically just texture mapped it onto a kind of old wooden texture that I had laying around. And I think it looks pretty good. It gives it kind of character. It's not too flashy. It's a canoe. I think, uh, I think this is a good starting point. So we'll see what it looks like in game. So we'll pop it into Unity. And I think that looks pretty good. It doesn't stand out too much against the environment. It fits in quite well. Proportions are correct. It, uh, it's, color it's highlighted in the uncolored world as all interactable objects are. And yeah, that's good. So next up, create a task list and get to work. So I use GitHub for all my task tracking. And since I'm the only developer on the project, I like to just have kind of general tickets with checklists for all the kind of base functionality and then more specific tickets later on. 
So the first thing that I need to be able to do is to make it targetable. And so that luckily this is just a checkbox. I've got the system kind of built out already. So you can see the dog barks, the girl runs over to it, but it doesn't actually do anything yet. So I need to write a little bit of code to actually activate it. So basically I've got a whole system for how, how these interactable objects work with the dog barking and getting the girl's attention. So really quick, bang, it's done. So you can see that log message there activating the canoe. That means we're good to go. And so now we can actually start adding some functionality. So the first thing I wanted to do was the camera control. So once you kind of go into the canoe, you're, you're, you'll be switching over to a new camera, which is the canoe camera. It behaves pretty similar, but just with slight, slight differences to the, to the normal in-game camera. And so, yeah, that part's done, nice and easy. And the next thing is going to be movement. So for the controls on this, I want it to play a little bit differently than the rest of the game. So I want it to be the right trigger to turn right, left trigger to turn left, both triggers to go straight. And um, as you can see, it worked perfectly on the first go. This, uh, yeah, I don't know if you've ever been in a canoe before, but that's not how they move. So gonna need to fix that up. Spent a good amount of time on this and um, in the end, I think I get to a pretty good state. And so it works the way I want it to. So when you're holding both triggers, you're gonna go straight, right trigger, turn right, left trigger, turn left. This kind of contrasts with the rest of the game, which is just your normal like WASD or joystick to move. But I wanted to, it'll make more sense when you see the animations, but I, I want you to kind of be controlling the girl paddling uh, as opposed to the canoe directly. So next up, Adding some coloring, so I want this lantern kind of on the front of the canoe to color the world around you, give it kind of like a ghostly uh, aesthetic. And with that in place, I was able to put the character models in. So you can see, we've got the character models and animations, the dog sitting up at the front, the girl paddling in the back, but uh, she doesn't have a paddle. And so that means that we need to get back into Blender, which means we need a little extra motivation. So with the paddle in place, I put that in the game and I think it's looking pretty good. It took a little while to get it moving from hand to hand properly. It's still a little janky when it passes back and forth, but I think it's looking pretty good. And so it was Saturday at this point, I figured this isn't bad for one day's work. I'll post it on Screenshot Saturday, get some feedback. So I posted on Twitter and Imager, both of which are at Kyle W. Banks if you want to follow me. But yeah, I got some good feedback and uh, I also got some feedback that was so obvious I don't know how I didn't see it. Firef. To turn left, one would paddle A on the right or break on the left. Somehow I stared at this all day and didn't see that. Sukai 92, paddle on right to turn left, but otherwise looking decent, which is not what I was going for. I was looking for awesome. Anyways, fixing the paddling side was actually really easy. So I still really want it to be hold left trigger to turn left, hold right trigger to turn right. And so I basically just reversed the animation. So this way you're kind of paddling in reverse or breaking and that would turn you in the correct direction. And so it keeps the controls nice and intuitive. So in order to get Zukaya92 to agree that this looks awesome, I feel like we need some sound effects and some particles to really sell the, sell the effect. So the first thing I did was grab some splash sound effects I had from an Ascent pack, bring them into Audacity, make some changes, tweak them a little bit to get them uh, sounding the way I wanted them to. I have about four or five variations, but then with some randomized pitch and everything, um, it, it, I think it works pretty well. You don't really notice that they're repeating. And for particles, I went with three particle systems. So a small wake behind the canoe when you're moving fast enough, a splash effect when your paddle touches the water, and some kind of water droplets that fly through the air when your paddle is above water. And I think it looks pretty, pretty good. Uh, I spent probably about seven hours working on this. I'm only gonna show you 15 seconds, so it looks like I nail it on the first try. But uh, yeah, let's take a look, how, see how it looks in game. So I think that's looking pretty good. Uh, obviously these are still, these are work in progress, right? The game's still quite a ways away from coming out. All of these things are gonna be improved on again and again and again as the game progresses. But I think this is a really good baseline. It's a great prototype. And this sets up uh, the feature and, and I can understand, you know, is it gonna feel good? Is it gonna be fun to play? 
And uh, I think the answer is yes. But yeah, so the next step for me was to record a new GIF and post this on the Steam page, which, if you didn't know, is up. You can go and wishlist it now. It would mean a ton. It, uh, it's a great way for uh, Steam to understand that there's an audience behind this game, that people want to play it, and it really helps me out. So it would mean the world to me if you could do that. I'll leave the link in the description below. But with that complete, there's just one more feature to implement, and this is where I need your help. So I added these docks, right? So each island is gonna ha each island that you can canoe to will have a dock, and your canoe will kind of just always be at the nearest dock, so you don't have to worry about remembering where you left it or anything. But I really struggled with this, trying to decide if you were going to be able to just park your canoe anywhere. So for example, just turning right up onto this hill and get hopping out and running around. And I thought that'd be pretty fun. However, it makes it really difficult for me to design levels that way when you have free reign to kind of just enter and leave levels kind of as you wish. It would make it feel pretty easy to, to beat the game. You just kind of circle around the island, decide the best, you know, the, the, the quickest way to get to the runes and, and restore color and be on your way. I think by having docks and only allowing you to get in and out at docks, it would make it easier for me to design levels because I know where you're going to be entering and exiting and I can kind of plan for that and design levels around that. But I really want to get your thoughts on that. I really want you to have a think about that from a gameplay point of view. Which would be more fun? What do you think would be more interesting? And so if you could leave a comment down below with which you prefer, kind of free reign or the dock system, that would be great. That would help me out. And um, and yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely take your feedback on that. I'm still kind of toying with both ideas. I'm, I haven't completely sold on, sold on one or the other. I'm leaning a little bit towards the dock, as you can see, because I implemented it. But um, yeah, I think it's just going to make it easier for, to design levels and, and build out good content, as opposed to fully open world where you it's just it's just really difficult to understand kind of what your your views are going to be when you enter the island and all that kind of stuff. In any case, I'll stop rambling now. Thank you so much for watching. This has been the canoe feature. We've got a good prototype. We're going to be able to build on this in the future. And I think in the next episode, we'll switch it up completely and go with a brand new feature, which I haven't hinted at anywhere. And I'm not even sure how it's going to work just yet, but I think it's going to be a really exciting one. In the meantime, if you guys can like the video, subscribe to the channel, that'll make sure you get notified when the next video comes out. And don't forget to leave a comment down below on the dock first completely open world. And uh, yeah, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.